welcome to our inaugural virtual sparkling wine tasting. Um, I have all, all my friends and my sisters with me here. Uh, we have Rebecca, sister two of three. She is co-owner of Rack and Riddle. I have Cynthia, she's sister three of three. She's business development of Rack and Riddle. I'm Sharon, sister one of three. And my goal is to be the best client of Rack and Riddles ever. <laughs> Penny is here, our amazing winemaker, sister four of three, um, winemaker extraordinaire. She hails from Jordan and then Jay. Um, she's been making wines for about 30 years and executive winemaker at Rack and Riddle and Breathless as well. And we have a very special guest today, um, Chris Sawyer. He is an international wine writer, a psalm, um, also psalm to the stars, which he's going to bring us the latest uh, wine competition there and the results and we're just thrilled that, to have you all. We're coming from five different uh, locations so um, bear with us. None of us is really techie <laughs> and I was in charge and I'm really not techie so we're, we're, we'll see how this all goes. <laughs> um, one of the things we really want to encourage is you to participate. So there's a way for you to um, get in the, the chat section and fire away any questions that you have for Penny or any of the sisters or Chris, and we'll catch those and answer them as we, we can. Um, also, you can change your name on the screen if you want, and you can tell us where you're from, which would be really fun. Uh, so I think it's up in the right-hand corner that you hit that, and um, you can change that out a little bit too and, and add your name if you haven't done that before. Um, so we're here to taste wine. Uh, today we're going to be doing the Blanc de Blanc. So pour yourself um, a glass of the Blanc de Blanc. And... Um, <laughs> Since we're members, thank you, Christopher. <laughs> Since we're members, um, we thought this was totally appropriate because this is um, our member-only wine. Uh, it's been very, very popular, and I have to say it's one of my favorites. Um, so pour yourself whatever you want, the, the beverage of choice, but that's what we're going to start with today. I have a little um, sequencing that we're going to do today. So... Let me see if I can put that up there. I don't know why. So my first techie thing is that I, <laughs> I don't know what I did. <laughs> well, can you hold this, Cynthia? <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, so um, we're going to, of course, pour the Blanc de Blanc. Um, one of the things that we're going to do throughout is uh, share breathless moments. So we'd love to hear from you about your breathless moments. And we actually have a grand prize at the end of it all to give away to one that hits our heart near and dear, although they're all going to be amazing. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how breathless started. Cynthia and Rebecca are going to bring the fun with the trivia, some prizes and, um, Chris is going to be talking to us next about um, the Sonoma International Film Festival, and Penny is going to be pairing the Blanc de Blanc with a couple of a savory and a sweet food, which will be really fun. And we'll talk about our next tasting and give away the grand prize and one final cheers and uh, just thank you. Thank you so much for being here. So the first toast tonight want to raise your glass wherever you are is to the world's good health and healing so cheers Cheers. 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 oh penny that blanc de blanc is so good <laughs> mm, i love it <laughs> me too me too so you probably see a familiar sight behind me um i'm at the tasting room the garden out there is in full bloom, full spring bloom. We've had the lavender out. I wish you could be here to see it. Um, maybe you will very soon. So that's, that's our hope. Um, 
just a little bit about Breathless and how it all started. Uh, Martha Jane was our mom and uh, she had a genetic disease called alpha one. So when she passed, um, we wanted to do something in her honor. Alpha one is a genetic uh, lung disease. It's kind of appropriate to be talking about right now. It acts like emphysema, though you've never smoked a day in your life. Um, so in the end, she was breathless, but it was the way she lived her life that inspired us every day. She just took no breath for granted and went out and made every day count. And so even today, we come here and we get that energy and just know that everything's gonna be all right. Um, so don't forget to share your breathless moments that you have for us to um, share with everyone. And now we're gonna have Cynthia bring on some fun. Awesome, thanks Sharon. Hi everybody, so glad you're here joining us today on this uh, beautiful Sunday. Thanks for taking the time um, to be with us. So uh, my sister Rebecca and I are gonna bring a little fun uh, into this wonderful live tasting. Um, we're of course gonna uh, get some really great uh, food and wine pairings with Penny. Um, but every once in a while, you're going to hear a noise, and we're going to do a trivia question. You'll hear a little glass uh, clinking, and that means we're going to stop and do uh, a trivia. So um, we're going to do three trivia questions, and then in addition to that, we have a grand prize winner, as Sharon was saying earlier, uh, for someone who um, sends through a breathless moment that kind of sticks out to us. Everybody's moments are beautiful and precious and, and they mean so much to us, but we're just gonna pick one today that just kind of stands out. So we'll share that with you at the very end. Um, the prize for that uh, very fun um, piece of the, of the live tasting is gonna be this, uh, I hope you can see it. It's this really beautiful bracelet. Um, it is a freshwater pearls with a Chanel vintage button. Um, it's just an amazingly beautiful bracelet. Just gonna slip it on real quick, you can see. You can dress it up and dress it down. It's just gorgeous. It's so, so wonderful and flexible and versatile. So that's gonna be our grand prize uh, for the breathless moment of the day. Um, and as I said, we'll be getting to that at the end, um, the prize, but we hope that all throughout the live tasting, you'll be sending us your breathless moments. Uh, again, just enter them into the, the chat box there um, and we'll be, we'll be watching those uh, during the, the live tasting. Um, for the other three trivia uh, prizes, we have some great prizes. Um, the first one is a gift certificate to our tasting room, it's $50. If you've been to our tasting room, you've seen how amazing it is, there's incredible um, items to buy for gifts for yourself, um, as well as our, our great wines. So um, that's our, our first uh, prize. Um, the second prize we have for you, I'm going to hold it up, hopefully you can see it. This is our sort of now signature t-shirt um, in the Breathless Tasting Room. We just love this t-shirt. It's super breathable, airy. You can layer it, wear it by itself. You know, summer's coming up, so it's going to be uh, t-shirt time very soon. Um, and on the front, it says, dress Italian, drive German, kiss French, be breathless. So this has definitely become our little signature uh, shirt. We love this guy. So this is um, one of the other prizes. And then we have a third prize, this bag of amazing goodies from our tasting room. Um, if you've been there, you know, we just have so many fun things to choose from. Sharon's picked out some of her favorites um, to add to this. We of course have our, our signature flutes. We have a pair of these um, for you that say breathless on them. These are perfect tasting glasses. We also have um, these really fun coasters, which can be tiles in your kitchen or they can be a coaster in your living room, whichever, whichever way you want to go. These are really fun with our logo on them. We have an amazing candle in here that is actually made from a champagne uh, bottle. 
And then there's a few other surprises. I'm not going to tell you all of them. It's just full of really fun stuff. So it's a full bag of, of breathless um, tasting room items. So those are going to be our, our wonderful trivia um, prizes. Again, please keep the breathless moments coming throughout. Um, we're really looking forward to reading those. Thank you for participating. That's super important to us. It's definitely the foundation of breathless. Um, so with that all being said, we are going to do our first trivia question. And this one's really, really amazing. I love this question. This was um, from Penny. Um, and it's, it's, it's a really great question. I love this. This is, this is historical. So listen closely. Um, and I'm going to kind of read it a couple of times just so everybody gets it and hears it. Um, so we would like for you to please name three of the founding mothers of Champagne. So these are really the matriarchs um, that ran the original Champagne houses. Um, they brought a lot of innovation, technology to what we know as the Champagne world today. Um, we have a list of about we've, of five women, um, but we're looking for three. And um, again, in the chat box, whoever comes up with the three names uh, first is going to be the winner of one of those great prizes. Um, so good luck and uh, have fun with this. This is uh, you know a lot of fun. We're all going to learn today. Um, and with that, <laughs> I'm going I'm to send it back to uh, Sharon. All right. So I now get to bring on Chris front and center. Um, he travels internationally, does a, many, many wine tastings. Um, probably over 40 a year. Uh, and we get to hear about the latest one that happened just before SIP occurred um, at the Sonoma International Film Festival. So it's all yours, well, Chris. Well, thank you very much. No, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, I gotta say, I'm a big fan of, of your label, The Breathless Experience. I have it often. And uh, thanks to you, um, all the team, it's, it's just a, a pleasure that you asked me to be a part of this with you. Um, I will say that um, I've been a sommelier for 30 plus years um, and national wine writer as well. I grew up here in Sonoma County, uh, very lucky there. I've watched uh, Sonoma County change a lot. Um, back in the old days, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, not really acknowledged. Um, and it has changed a lot. These are the two grapes of Sonoma County. There is no doubt about it. We have great Zinfandel and we have other uh, great varieties here, Rhone varieties and Cabernet, but nothing like Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. And I think that this is the time when a new brand kind of comes up, especially to me in uh, you know the restaurants that I've worked with through the years now with Gravenstein Grill and I just won the the top uh, sommelier of Sonoma County for the seventh straight year. Um, I appreciate that um, for all my fans out there and and the people that love Gravenstein Grill. Um, I think it's great too. Closed right now but we will reopen as um, as we're very amped up and ready to, to help people again but of course I have Breathless on the list there and it's because of Sharon and I have a great relationship you know where uh, we really met was in Sonoma when I was at the lodge at Sonoma and and during the film festival which is the Sonoma International Film Festival so uh, sh as Sharon said I do judge a lot of competitions internationally each year and uh, this past year um, I judged 20 22 um, competitions in in 2019 this year I started it off great you know I judged uh, this one that I'm going to discuss in a minute was the fifth one I judged in the barely over two months. Uh, the first one was San Francisco International Film Festival. Second one was East Meets West. Uh, third one was uh, in uh, Miami, which also was another one that um, Breathless Wines were involved in, which is the American Fine Wine Competition. And the fourth or the, the last one was uh, this amazing film festival wine competition. It is the first of its kind, really. Um, and the, the reason we did this three years ago for the Sonoma International Film Festival Sonoma International Film Festival is very, very special because, you know, we're talking about 22 years of this uh, festival going on in Sonoma Valley, of all places, where the real life of, of the wine industry in California started. 
um, there have been a lot of wineries in this area and there are more than you can ever believe now. And so uh, it's the right place to do these things. I became very well known as the first ever film festival sommelier in the world. Um, and that year that I was named that and the um, sommelier to the stars, that's everyone out there listening to this right now is you're all the stars. Um, that year I judged 63, or sorry, I, I paired 63 different films with individual wines. Where else can you do that? But in Sonoma <laughs> County and especially in Sonoma Valley. So, you know, it's uh, been a really uh, great pleasure. So three years ago, my great uh, friend Shay Wirtz uh, approached me and said, Chris, uh, we would really, we're very interested in doing a competition for the International Film Festival. So what do you think about that? I said, I think that if we can do it anywhere, this is it. So this year, um, right before SIP started, two days before SIP started and before all the wineries um, and tasting rooms were closed down, we judged that on what day? Friday the 13th, of course, of, <laughs> of March, um, of all days uh, that we did it. We did it at Ledson uh, Winery in Sonoma Valley. Uh, there were a lot of contributions, you know, 100 plus um, uh, submissions. And in the, the sparkling wine category, um, there were a number of the breathless wines. And also one thing that I was very, very pleased by and, and super excited by was still wines from Breathless too, uh, which, you know, I got to know their, their sparkling wine and even that's opened up, but these, um, these still wines are very, very cool. And I'm, I'm so excited that everyone is going through this process of really making still wines as well. But I think that the most important thing is at the end of the day, when my seven, sorry, six um, judges uh, came together after team one and team two were done, brought the, the top winning best of class wines together, the one that won the competition for sparkling wine was none other than the Blanc de Blanc, um, which is exactly what we are tasting right now. And it's kind of funny because right after... This, this competition, as I said, the first week of the year, we judged San Francisco International. That, the best sparkling wine in that whole competition, which is 11,000 wines submitted to that on a regular basis, the number one winner was the Blanc de Noir by Breathless. Something's <laughs> going on here, you guys, and it's all good. Um, so I, you know, I want to say that um, this was a very special moment for me when I got to, well, a breathless moment, um, when I got to acknowledge the fact that it was breathless. When we do these competitions, these are completely blind. And in the case of the Sonoma International Film Festival, I will give a lot of credit to Jim Taylor for taping the hell out of every top. So there's no way we can see what is in that bottle. And so when it was revealed that it was the Blanc de Blanc, uh, what a joy to see that, you know, of all the great um, production wineries of sparkling wines in the United States, the concentration is really right here, Sonoma County going into Carneros area of Napa Valley. There's no doubt that the best ones, you know, as far as what you see on shelves across the nation are all right here. You know, you have Schramsberg, you have Domain Carneros, you have Domain Chandon, you have Gloria Ferrer, you have Breathless. And <laughs> Breathless won that competition. And it also won the one against every kind of uh, winery that wanted to submit from um, around America. And actually this year we did also Canada and uh, Baja, Mexico as well. So Wow, what a, what a competition win in both of those, the San Francisco International competition, and now more recently, the Blanc de Blanc winning the Sonoma International Film Festival. It's been really something, and I wanna say this as a writer, kind of drop back as a writer now, and really talk about why these wines, especially this Blanc de Blanc that just won, is so important to me. What Breathless has done, what the sisters have done, is something really interesting for the industry that we don't talk enough about and a lot of people don't know out there about, about Rack and Riddle. Rack and Riddle is a company that the sisters started um, that really became something that we didn't have in Sonoma County or Northern California. And that is a production facility that could make sparkling wines for still winemakers. 
like the ones I said, Gloria Ferrer, Domain Carneros, all of them have their own production facilities there. Most wineries don't have the room for it that are still wines, um, that they just make still wines there, or they just don't have the technology to really make it happen. These sisters have done that. And so Rack and Riddle has become a huge thing. So if you like Pinot Noir, you like Chardonnay, and you go to these wineries, you come up here and visit us, and you go, oh my God, you guys have sparkling wine? How'd you get that? Because of Rack and Riddle, about 90% of those are produced by Rack and Riddle. And it's why, um, you know, we get into what Penny does and, and what everyone does. This is a huge contribution. So when I think about Breathless and I think about kind of really the other thing that the sisters have done, it's really starting a whole trend here in Northern California that they do extremely well in as we keep tasting. Um, but also the fact that they really have opened up the marketplace and all the great um, sensational sparkling wines that we're really producing here have a little bit of their touch on them too. So I really wanna say thank you to the sisters for inviting me to be part of this because you know it's a quite a thrill to taste anything by them, but to really kind of talk with them and the great winemaker too, that's really something. So I'm happy to say that the Sonoma International Film Festival has been postponed, but it has been rescheduled too. So at this point right now, it is July um, 30th through August 2nd that it has been recalibrated to run. And that is an amazing accomplishment for think about all the events in your areas that have been canceled outright. It's not gonna happen until you know next year, I'm sorry. This one, took it right when it happened and said, let's book something so we can get it done. It will be very interesting how we're gonna do it. Who knows how it's gonna go? But the fact is there are dates that are set for that July 30th through August 2nd. And I can't wait to see more Breathless Wines there. Cheers on that one, ching. Um, <laughs> here, here. Um, but you know, Penny is uh, the mastermind behind this. And this is a wonderful thing to kind of get her and I kind of talking together because she's the winemaker. Um, the sisters get the great grapes and Penny really handpicks um, where they're gonna come from. But I think that this is the great thing about Penny is she actually is a chef too. And when we really talk about sparkling wines, this is one thing that I really wanna drive home. If you guys hear nothing else from me today besides the Sonoma International Film Festival is happening, at the, this wine, this Blanc de Blanc won big in that competition and that Breathless is so great. It's that sparkling wines are an everyday thing. It's not just for celebrations. It's not just for Easter, for Valentine's Day or, or the holidays around Christmas. It is every day. And we have gotten to this level because the food quality in the United States have got, has gotten there. When we uh, start off when we start talking about these things. First thing that we talk about is salt. We talk about breads. We talk about brioche and, and pas pasta when we get into food and all these kinds of things that we can do with sparkling wines. And the quality of grapes have gone up, uh, gone through the roof, especially here in Sonoma County and the North Coast Appalachian, which this Blanc de Blanc is credited with the North Coast Appalachian. And for those of you that don't know North Coast, it means Sonoma County. Plus you could have a little bit from Napa or from Mendocino or from Lake or actually Marin County from my house, which is right over that way. So that is North Coast. Um, North Coast was founded in 1983. It's a great appellation. That's the same year that Russian River Valley was founded. Green Valley, um, Dry Creek and Carneros were all the same year that North Coast appellation was founded. So this is not a crazy appellation. It is actually founded on so much history and these grapes are great, and that's why these wines taste so good. So thank you, guys, and thank you, Penny, for being you and for putting these things together. Awesome, Chris. Thank you so much. This is so informative, and thank you so much for all the input on breathless wines. That, that's wonderful. Um, we've got some great questions, if you want to take a few here. Um, the first one I have for you is um, they want to know about your glass. And why are you drinking from that particular glass rather than something traditional? Okay. Well, uh, as you can see in front of Rebecca right there, that, that kind of glass is an old fashioned. That's like the classic one. If she could reach out and grab it, it would be right there. Think about when we, 
when we drank, yeah, champagne out of these kinds of glasses, as we call it sparkling wine here because we want to give credit to champagne. I think one of the things that we've really found about the industry overall and why I'm drinking out, out of a more of a Chardonnay glass is because the flutes as we know them today are very closed at the, the front. I mean, it's a very, very close. I mean, it's like a, a 50 cent piece. Remember when we actually had coins, everyone? Uh, it's about, that's about the circum, you know, about that round. And it really closes off the nose. So we're starting to find where it's ballooning out a little bit more. And if you guys go to my Instagram, which is Christopher Sawyer Sommelier or Sawyer Sommelier on Instagram, you'll see that I did a little video just to promote this uh, discussion that we're going to have where I was at the amazing breathless tasting room and I was going, I was kind of panning through the different styles of glassware that I was being served in. This is something that's very distinctive and very different. What are the styles of wine? What are the varietals that are in there? And how do we want them to really open up? Because it's not just about drinking anymore. It's really about sticking your nose in the glass and you can't stick your nose in a flute. It doesn't really work. So having a little bit more of a small, a bigger rounder um, size here, but a very smaller size at the top really allows the, the wine to open up inside the glass and you to be able to smell more. So I think we're really experimenting a lot more, but you're, you're starting to see flutes that are really starting to open up and balloon at the top. And I mean, it's from Riedel, it's from everyone is doing that style now. And I think it's because of the sommeliers, because of the chefs and because of the quality of sparkling wine of America and champagne has gone through the roof with the great, the knowledge of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay in particular. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, thank you very much for that. Yeah, um, Fire away at me. I'm ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, here's another great uh, question for you. What's the most interesting wine competition that you've ever judged? And give us give us a why. Oh, okay. Uh, no question about it. It's Concours Mondial de Brussels. Um, and uh, we, uh, <laughs> as it would be, I would be coming back from the Hospice de Rhone uh, happening in, um, down in Paso Robles today. I would be driving back to pack my bag to get on a plane tomorrow morning to fly to um, the Czech Republic where we would be judging that competition. I've judged this for four years, and uh, this year we're, we were going to be in the Czech Republic. Last year we were in Switzerland. The year before that we were in Beijing. The year before that we were in Spain. Um, it is uh, really quite an honor to be one of 11 judges from the United States that has been chosen to go there on a regular basis. Um, and we have rescheduled that for uh, September. But it is 350 judges from around the world. It's the second largest competition in the world. The only one bigger than it is Decanter. And Decanter is done over two weeks in London. They do not move anywhere. This one is actually mobile. We're, we're going to different countries. And we have no clue what we're tasting. It's like the greatest thing ever where they don't even tell us the varietals. They don't tell us the region, the varietals, the price point or anything. And here I am sitting with my last team, which was uh, France, Portugal, Russia, and Hungary, and me. And that was it. And um, so to judge with people that you don't really know, but you become friends with, and especially with people whose palates are from around the world, there's nothing better than that. It's uh, really quite a treat. And um, I'm certainly hoping that it, it takes off and we, I am in the Czech Republic uh, in September. Wow, oh, what a wonderful experience. That's awesome. Thank you for that story. That's Absolutely. incredible. Um, okay, we have one last question for you. This is a little sure. bit more on the personal side, speaking of vintage. Sure. Yeah. Uh, rumor has it that you like to spin the vinyl. I, I think we're all old enough here, well, at least us on the panel, to remember what that is. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little, some of your favorite uh, vintage records that are in your collection? And it sounds like they're right in the room with you. They are. This is my cellar down here. You can kind of just see it, but this is a very corner of it. It goes this way around. And I'm looking right at my turntables right there in my mixing board. Um, it's a very funny thing. I did grow up in Russian River Valley. There's no doubt about that. Um, when I went to University of California, Davis, um, 
I was the music critic there. So a lot of winemakers still thank me for introducing them to great um, bands uh, from the early, early 90s. Um, but I was also a DJ. I did all these kinds of things. And so, you know, when you come down to my cellar, I only play vinyl down here and I'll mix it. I'll do whatever it is. But it because of that, because I was the music critic there at Davis and I even had my own um, show on KDBS, um, which is the station uh, from the college. Uh, it was a great thing. But my my editor came to me one time from uh, the, the Aggie, the newspaper and said, Chris, um, you're doing great. Everyone loves your stuff, but you need more credit. So you're going to be Mr. Science guy now too. You're going to go talk to, you know, veterinarians about cutting bulls balls off, or you're going to go talk to this guy about this kind of medical thing. And you're going to go to the viticulture and enology department. And you're going to talk to a lot of great people that are the greatest professionals in the wine industry. I did not know, I did not go to Davis to be in the wine industry. But soon thereafter, after talking with some of the great professors and learning so much about wine so quickly, that's how it kind of happened. So it's funny that all this vinyl is down here in my cellar today. It makes total sense to me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. Exactly. Really appreciate Absolutely. it. Um, so just a note, everybody, we do have our first winner. Um, that would be Rebecca from Kenwood. Um, she, got, she got the ladies, the mavens of, of Champagne. Oh, cool. So congratulations, Rebecca. Um, I know. Woo Good job. Uh, so I'll send it back to you, Chris, um, now to introduce our wonderful winemaker, Penny. Right. So Penny, um, what I love about what I do is, um, you know, as a, as a sommelier, I think about the chef first. When you come into a great restaurant, a real good sommelier is not there to show him, him or herself off. It's really to show the chef off. And the fact is that we don't need wine to, to live. We actually need water and we need food. Those are the two things. Wine makes our lives so much better. And it is part of the, the food chain, especially because it is all based on grapes. So the wonderful thing that I love about Penny is her real passion for this and her craftsmanship of the wines that, that are produced under the uh, Breathless label and obviously have been produced that she's worked with with Jay Wine Company, which I just did a great uh, show with uh, the winemaker there recently and Jordan Wines, um, is that it's really about that integration of food and wine together. And that's why I love the fact that Penny, of all people, is a wonderful chef as well. So Penny's got a few things. One's a Gruyere. And the next is going to be a dessert item, too. So, Penny, I will throw in a few tidbits here as I taste and think about what you're putting in there as the ingredients. But I can't wait to, to see how you're making this. So to everyone um, that's following, here's Penny. Thank you, Chris. It's really great to hear what you have to say about the wines. And, and gosh, you know, that we are... Uh, some of the best of the best out there uh, really is very heartwarming and uh, really I, I just don't even know what to say uh, that we uh, won this amazing award. Um, I just want to uh, also say that uh, just a reminder that the wine that we're going to uh, be tasting and I'm going to be reviewing is a members only wine. So uh, hopefully uh, you can pass this along and uh, we can get a few more members on board here. A um, little bit about the wine. Uh, this is 100% Chardonnay, as uh, Chris said. Um, the grapes span pretty much the totality of Sonoma County. And then there is a small vineyard uh, in Mendocino right on the Sonoma County Mendocino line uh, that we get the grapes for this wine as well. So the grapes uh, in Sonoma County come from uh, the Carneros region, Dry Creek, Russian River, uh, Alexander Valley, uh, really some great growing areas for, for grapes and for Chardonnay. And then this Mendocino vineyard uh, is really kind of the little bit of spice that goes into this, uh, really kind of brings some of that tropical note along that uh, I really love about this wine. 
a little bit about uh, the winemaking. Uh, as I'm making wines, I'm always thinking about how they're going to go with food. Um, for me, wine and food go together. Uh, that doesn't mean I don't sit on the porch from time to time and just have a glass of wine. Uh, but ultimately, if I can have my wine uh, with some foods, uh, really that, that's ultimately uh, the best for me. So uh, I do want to invite everybody to pour a glass of the Blanc de Blanc if you have it. Uh, if not, uh, whatever you have, uh, go ahead and uh, pour yourself a glass. And then also, if you have some food uh, to go along with that, uh, I'd love to hear uh, what foods uh, you're having along with this uh, as I'm doing the, the presentation on the dishes. Um, so there's two dishes that I'm going to present. Uh, one of them is a savory dish. One of them is a, uh, a sweet dish. Uh, so that you can have your wine kind of all through from beginning to end. And this Blanc de Blanc really goes all the way through. Um, you can have it with a fish dish for dinner, along with whatever appetizer you're having. And then uh, the dessert that I'm going to present, uh, this goes perfect with that as well. Um, just a little bit, I want to go back to the vineyards and give you kind of an update of what's going on out in the vineyards. Uh, right now, they're, they're really in a huge growth phase, and so they're, the shoots are getting bigger. I mean, every day I go out, there's, you know, another couple of inches. Uh, the leaves are getting better, bigger. Uh, but the really fun thing is you can start to see the, the little flower buds are starting to, to form out there. Um, in about two to three weeks, those are going to bloom. And I love that time of the year when these things bloom. Uh, you drive through the counties and you just can smell the aroma of the blossoms. It's almost kind of a citrus, but just a little bit subtle. Um, so if you do get a chance to come out during bloom, it's really an exciting and really a wonderful time. So back to the dishes. Uh, the first dish I want to present is called a Vigere. And uh, it's a little savory pastry uh, that is perfect with sparkling wine. And, and probably a lot of people, if you say, what are you going to have with sparkling wine? Uh, Gougeres tend to pop up. Um, I do like a recipe that I have from Julia Child. But of course, I never follow a recipe identical to what it says. And so with this, I've made a few uh, changes to the, the original recipe. So let me put my glass down uh, so I can go over uh, the recipe with you. Um, and just so you know, these recipes, both of them will be on the website. I don't know that they're up there yet, uh, but uh, please uh, take a peek at them. Uh, they may be the basic recipes, but with that, take note of, of some of the changes that we're going to make on these. So uh, the Gougeres. Um, the Gougere is, is made from a, a pastry that is also used for sweet dishes, uh, for eclairs and for uh, little puffs, uh, little savory puffs, cream puffs. Uh, you can stuff them with cream. Uh, but what I'm going to do is actually uh, make a little savory one. I'm just going to kind of move my camera around just a little bit there. So when it starts out, uh, it doesn't take very long to make this. It, it's actually fairly easy, uh, but it comes out as kind of a little squishy dough. What I've added to the recipe are some chives and a little bit of lemon zest. And I like that lemon zest, especially if I'm gonna have the Blanc de Blanc, uh, really kind of brings out some of the citrus and it actually even helps with some of the apple notes that are in this wine as well. So here's uh, kind of what it looks like. I'm just going to squeeze out a couple of them here. If I can just go in real quick too, Penny, um, just about the history of Blanc de Blanc. Um, everyone thinks that, you know, when you say champagne or sparkling wine, the first thing people think of is Brut. And it's really been really the last 20 years that Blanc de Blanc has come into even our glossary of what we're doing. And to be really honest, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir 
were really started back in the 1700s of growing in, in not only uh, Burgundy, but also in the Champagne region. But it was only about 200 years ago where they were actually isolated and not used in the brute blends and actually found the best vineyards there, isolated them and took them and started bottling themselves. So this Blanc de Blanc is really a big deal. And I got to say, just because this one, I'm starting to see these Blanc de Noirs and Blanc de Blancs win way more competitions than the Brutes do. And I agree. And, you know, one of my mentors uh, um, actually helped me to understand that part of winemaking is to make the grape the star and not to cover it up, change it into something else. Uh, now, sparkling wine, we're, we're hopefully still keeping the essence, uh, but then amping it up a little bit with the bubbles. So it's really exciting to be able to take these varietals and not only the brute blends, but then making these Blanc de Blancs and Blanc de Noirs that are uh, really a, a great uh, example of what those grapes can bring. So uh, yeah, it's really, really fun. Um, so back to my little Gougere. Now here's kind of what it starts with. And here, right up my alley, <laughs> is what they're gonna look like when they're finished. Oh. I mean, <laughs> I want some of that. I want one. <laughs> so they pop all up. I know, I wish I could share these with everybody uh, from here, uh, but at least I can share them virtually with you. So you can see they've puffed up and they're kind of a little bit brown. And then I just want to show you they're, they're light and they're airy. Um, you actually could fill these up if you wanted to, uh, but really they're just perfect the way they are. And you can see the chives in there. I've also added Gruyere. You can do Parmesan. Uh, there's lots of other cheeses that you could put into these as well. Uh, but then I like the little bit of green from the chive. It just kind of livens it up just a little bit. So uh, just a little bite here. Mm. So a little bit of salt from the, the cheese. And then that lemon zest just kind of amps it up just a little bit. And then <clears throat> along with the Blanc de Blanc, which has these beautiful kind of citrus notes, citrus flower, uh, and then kind of almost a little bit of a pineapple, uh, some green apple, uh, just really wonderful. Um, I'd love to hear some of the uh, descriptors that you all have out there as well. Uh, if you want to just kind of chat those in, we'd love to see them. Um, so here's a... Uh, I have to drink with Penny. Yeah. Well, for, for me, uh, Penny, like I really think about Père Frangipane, especially when I smell it, because it does have that little bit of crust on it, like that really nicely baked crust. So I, you know, going right there with you. And also the salt is a key thing, I think, in anything that we're talking about with sparkling wine, as far as the drier styles of sparkling wine, is really why salt is so great, is just even having potato chips. I mean, it's the greatest thing ever where you just have potato chips and a great sparkling wine and you taste that salt and all of a sudden it isolates all these great flavors that you're just enjoying that you never knew were in there. You're like, oh wow, this is just a potato chip that got me to this place. And so I think that that's a critical part of that, that recipe is your salt in there. Absolutely. And for me, uh, potato chips with a little bit of creme fraiche and a little bit of a uh, tobiko or a little bit of caviar, uh, that is like hands down if I could eat that every day and, and have sparkling. Um, at least I can have the sparkling every day, uh, not so much on the uh, uh, tobiko and the, the caviar. But um, anyway, and you're absolutely right. I mean, the foods here in Sonoma County are so wonderful. Um, that really is what inspires me to cook as well. It's just the wonderful Great. foods here. So, so, uh, so I was just going to jump in, Penny. There's some amazing uh, meals going by that you haven't been able to read. Um, there was uh, focaccia and garlic olive oil, fish tacos, uh, potatoes, oh, and then mac and cheese. 
Uh, then there's a Greek cheese, I hope I'm saying this right, spiral with lemon marmalade with the Blanc de Noir. Um, crab, oh, oh, oh. crab stuffed <laughs> mushrooms. And yes, some I like that cheese. one. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful meals going by. Oh, absolutely. And you know, with, uh, with this time uh, that we're staying at home more, uh, I used to really only cook maybe a couple of days a week. And really, I've had the opportunity to come home almost every night and, and cook. Um, so it's, it's kind of adding to my waistline a little bit, but uh, really has been wonderful to uh, really be able to use my kitchen that, that's kind of been neglected for a while. So, um, so anyway, cheers to all of you. Um, I think we're, we're good for a few questions. We are, we are. So um, have a great question here from John and Mary. Um, they were asking the difference between our Blanc de Noir or a Blanc de Noir and a Brut. Okay, uh, if you don't mind, I'll take that one. Um, Blanc de Noir is all made with Pinot Noir. So um, Pinot Noir is the genus, believe it or not, um, I did a great cruise on, uh, on uh, Celebrity Cruises with Costco. It sold out in three days. I called it Pinot Noir, Pinot Paradise in the Caribbean. Go figure. Sold out in three days. Um, Pinot Noir is on, and I took the, the Blanc de Noir from uh, Breathless with me. It was a huge hit. And I got to talk about the genus of Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is actually really Chardonnay would not be here without Pinot Noir. It is actually Pinot Noir came from, or sorry, Chardonnay came from Pinot Noir. And the same thing with Pinot Meunier, which you see in the Brutes as well. But when we talk about Blanc de Noir, um, that is exclusively really Pinot Noir, whereas Blanc de Blanc means white on white, and it's all Chardonnay. So these were two names that were decided upon about the turn of last century, by, uh, by the producers in Champagne. So very, very interesting. And that's a great question that should be always asked. Absolutely. Awesome, thank yeah. you, Chris. Um, all right, here's another great question for you. Uh, Penny, um, Jackie asks, what inspired you to become a winemaker? Well, uh, it, it's an interesting story, I think. Um, I, I didn't start out as a winemaker. I didn't go to Davis. I didn't go to any of the schools. Um, I was looking for a change in career, and uh, winemaking kind of became my, my third career move. Um, I had a really good friend in high school who was a winemaker, uh, really right out of school, and uh, as I was kind of looking to see what I could do with uh, my science degree and but something still kind of a little artistic uh, and something that I loved which was wine uh, I kind of talked with him a little bit and he said oh you know you've got the science background uh, you've got the art you know this this will be this will be slam dunk so then it was time to try to figure out where to go and, and uh, what kind of a job. And I really lucked out. My husband and I moved to Sonoma County. Uh, within about a year, I got a job. And uh, that was with Jordan. And at the same time, I was still working in, in hospital. Um, but after a couple of years, uh, they decided uh, uh, that they would uh, bring me on full time. And that was, that was really kind of the start of my career. Um, I loved wine. It kind of made sense. I really didn't think that unless you had grown up with wine uh, that you could ever become a winemaker. And I really, I just really lucked out. Uh, this is something now that I've done for almost 35 years and uh, I, I've never looked back. Awesome. Thank you, Penny. Do, do you mind if I jump Thank in real quick? Goodness. And yeah, we're so glad you did. Yeah. Let, let me jump in real quick, you guys. Um, I, I just, I've seen a lot of uh, notes about Pinot Meunier coming up here. So let me be real specific about Pinot Meunier. Pinot Meunier is the, basically the brother of Pinot Noir. It tends to have a little bit more body roundness, it tends to grow in more swampier or interesting areas that are almost in our case, more foggy kinds of pockets. 
Um, I remember when uh, Hanley Cellars up in Mendocino, had, they actually did a Pinot Meunier by itself. And actually, Domaine Chandon does bottle that by itself. But the fact is that um, the, the poor Milla Hanley pulled out that, that vineyard. And I was so sad. And I wanted to cry right in front of her. But she gave me a six pack. And I felt OK after that. But, um, <laughs> But the one thing I do want to say, I did forget to mention one competition that I judged. That's called the Toast of the Coast. It's in San Diego, actually at the Del Mar Downs that Bing Crosby uh, built. And I did that in late February before I did this uh, competition for the uh, Sonoma International Film Festival. At that competition, we started the Friends of Pinot Meunier Society. So... Believe it or not, we actually have a Friends of Pinot Meunier Society. So if you guys that really have these questions, join our great group. And um, we, will, we will talk more in detail because people are starting to make still wines out of this grape now. And they are very, very interesting. So thank you for everyone's questions. I was seeing them flash a lot of Pinot Meunier. So I had to, yes. had to get that discrepancy taken care of. Friends of Pinot Meunier Society. Boom. And I'd like to say that we're, we're in the works of uh, making uh, potentially a little bit of Pinot Meunier uh, for uh, sparkling. So we'll uh, see how that comes out. It's still got a little more time uh, before it's uh, ready to go. Uh, but it's something that I've always wanted to do. There just isn't a lot of Pinot Meunier in California. Uh, just a little story briefly. Uh, if you're in France, in Champagne, as you're driving along the highways, you'll see these different color patches of grapes out there. Pinot Meunier has a silvery leaf on it. So you'll mm -hmm. see a little silver vineyard and then you'll see kind of a, a green uh, yellow vineyard for the Chardonnay. And then you'll see the darker green for the Pinot uh, Noir. And it's really exciting to go through there because really in France, Pinot Meunier makes up about a third of the grapes that are grown there. So we're here, people don't even know what it is. We're really fortunate we are able to source a little bit of Pinot Meunier. Um, so that does go into our Brut, uh, it does go into our uh, Blanc de Noir, and uh, sometimes into the Rosé, uh, but uh, we don't have a lot of it. So uh, we do try to make sure that it makes its way mainly into the Blanc de Noir. Mm, great. All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody, for those great answers and awesome questions. So many fun questions to answer. There's so much about sparkling wine that's interesting. Um, but now is the time. We're gonna do our trivia number two question. Um, this is um, one, of, one of my favorite quotes. This is someone that you have to tell us who said this. So this is a quote um, and here we go. I only drink champagne on two occasions. When I am in love, and when I am not. <laughs> so again, just put your answers in the in the chat box there. We're looking forward to seeing your your answers. Um, and then without any further ado, it looks like we're gonna go back to Penny for her number two. Excellent. So now we're gonna kind of flip gears a little bit and we're gonna move into kind of the sweet world after we've had our nice little uh, gougeres there. Let me just kind of move that out of the way. And the collect is actually just a, a pie dough uh, that is freeform uh, that can be filled with fruit. And you can use any kind of fruit that you would like. Uh, what I did for the pairing with the Blanc de Blanc is I took um, apples and mix them with a little bit of sugar and a little bit of cinnamon. And uh, I use some dried cranberries. I actually like that, it kind of looks pretty and uh, just adds a little bit of sweetness to it as well. So I just pulled that out of the uh, oven uh, because it was, uh, um, that's where I, I went a little while ago. <laughs> and so here is the skeleton. So oh, as you can see, beautiful. it's all free form, so you don't need a pie plate. You can do this on any kind of a sheet pan. And uh, what I want to do is uh, just put a, a little bit of sugar over the top of this. 
You can have this with a little bit of cream if you like, uh, or a little bit of ice cream if it's right out of the oven, just let it cool just a little bit. And then lemons right now are just so beautiful. I'm using lemons for anything that I can. And um, so I'm just gonna zest a little bit of lemon on that. There we go. And then I'm just gonna cut a little piece so you all can see it. I'm just gonna move my little cutting board there. I think all of you can see this now. And again, you don't need any special things. Uh, I kind of cheat a little bit on galettes. Uh, what I do is I buy uh, already made uh, pie dough and I keep it in the freezer. So then if people come over at the last minute, there's this quick dessert. It takes about a half an hour to thaw out the pie dough. Um, and then I've always got fruit. You could use frozen fruit if you have, or if you have fresh fruit. Um, and again, you can have this uh, uh, with a little bit of cream. And if you still have a little bit of Blanc de Blanc left, whoops, I'm making a real mess here. So you can see this, this beautiful uh, here. And my kitchen smells like apples, like apple pie right now. It's just absolutely amazing. So um, my husband will be in here uh, eating this uh, pretty pretty soon as well. So uh, the apples, a little bit of the, the cranberries. Mm. That cinnamon is just really, really. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. And then amazingly, the cinnamon really goes with the fruit in this Blanc de Blanc. You might not think that the sugar and the cinnamon would go, but with all the fruit that's in this wine, it just really is this wonderful match. Yep. Well, Chardonnay is just so interesting how, how many different styles there are now because of the clones that we have here in the United States. I mean, that's the thing is why we've diversified with Pinot Noir. We can talk about all these clones of Pinot Noir that have three digits, like the 115-667-777-828. We can go on. We sound like doctors after a while. We do. <laughs> but, but the fact is the same thing has started to happen with Chardonnay and of course the Wenty clone and the the um you know the Hansel and the greatness of Sonoma Valley for having Hansel but you know these are very distinctive flavors so when you stack them on top of each other they pair up with all sorts of different things on that plate so it's the same thing with that amazing dessert item that you, you just made absolutely and and again you know you may not think that the wine with the acidity would actually go with this but the balance is really, really wonderful. Um, so for me to be able to have one wine that I could actually have all the way through my meal, maybe in the middle, maybe you throw in a Brut or a Blanc de Noir, depending on what you're having, but really this wine would go all the way through your meal. So really a special wine. Um, cheers. 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 Thanks, Penny. Well, the, a couple of questions. A couple of more fun questions have come through. Um, how about this one? This one's one uh, we all want to know. What's the best temperature that we should drink our champagne and sparkling wine? And that's a really great question. Uh, a lot of people want to take it like right out of the freezer or right out of the refrigerator. I actually suggest that you take it out, and depending on the temperature outside, if it's 101, you may only want to leave it out for a little while, but just let it kind of come up just a little bit in temperature, maybe 15 minutes on an average day. The reason for that is if it's too cold, you're not really going to be able to appreciate the fruit in there. Uh, it actually kind of freezes your taste buds and you'll get the acidity, but you won't get all of the beautiful fruit. In California, we get amazing fruit. And so that's why California wines tend to exhibit that versus the French champagnes that tend to uh, really rely a lot more on the yeast. 
So yeah. really, if you just let it come up to temperature, you know, even uh, 48, 49 uh, degrees, just 15 minutes, take it out and then open it up and uh, actually maybe open it up and then uh, let it uh, warm up a little bit and then uh, pour. Exactly. So I, 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 I would concur 100% um, with that. Um, I think it is best when you when you chill it, let it open up, take those first sips because what it does is isolates those flavors. So you have things like, oh, that lemon, oh, that peach, oh, that pear, really right there. But as it opens up, these are really finely made. I mean, this is champagne quality. This is the best of the best at these competitions that, that these wines really are. And I think that, that this is a good example of how they actually really become more interesting and the flavors are so complex that they really open up if you give it a little bit of time, but also let it warm up a little bit. And I think that's, you want it about at cave temperature, which, which is really the prime time to really taste it as at cave temperature. Usually if you take it out of the fridge, it's going to be below cave temperature. So you want it about cave temperature, which is about 59 six to 61 degrees. And you want it about right there that you're going to get the best of the best. It's so good, especially with food. Absolutely. Penny, do you have a favorite? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I get asked this question a lot. And what I have to say is, you know, if you have kids, you don't have a one child that you go, you know, this is my favorite uh, over the other one. Uh, hopefully you you know you see the attributes in in each one of them and uh really wine is the same way each one of them has its own personality and so it really depends on what i'm doing what i'm eating uh that kind of makes my preference for the day uh but really they're they're just kind of like kids you you love them all so anyway great <laughs> great question very good, very good. Okay, so um, just to do an announcement on our trivia questions, we do have a winner on the uh, the, la the second question we posed. Uh, John and Mary won for Coco Chanel. Um, and I also realized that I didn't give you sure. the list that we had for the first uh, trivia question about the, uh, the founding mothers of Champagne. Those were uh, Louise Pomery, Madame Clicquot, Lily Bollinger, Mathilde, Laurent, Pierre, and Apolline Henriot. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, and we got our great, of course, uh, winner on that one as well. Well, thank you so much, Penny. Just back to you real quick. Any, any final thoughts? No, uh, no final thoughts uh, that uh, I can come up with at the moment, but I would like to toast to all of you out there. Uh, may our house uh, never be too full uh, that we can't have all of our friends. Cheers. 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 I, I have one finishing uh, question or an answer to a question that I did see roll across there. Can these wines be aged? Oh, that's a very interesting question. And the answer is yes. Um, believe it or not, sparkling wine, if it's made of this quality, is age worthy. I, I don't know if you can see it, but behind me up here, is actually some bottles that lay this way that kind of go up in the, the raptors of this this uh, cellar. And uh, those are all champagne bottles or, or sparkling wine bottles that I feel uh, I'd like to taste them in five to 10 years. So I think Breathless is moving in that, that direction. And if you buy a case of, of Breathless, I would suggest you throw a few of those bottles uh, into the cellar for a little while and taste them because what really happens is you start to get, as they really age, the acid breaks off a little bit, but you start to really understand what a Chardonnay grape tastes like in the Blanc de Blanc or in the Pinot Noir with the Blanc de Noir because it really does have that expression of the fruit. The thing about sparkling wine is it's the first grapes that are picked every year. That happens, Sonoma County, wherever sparkling wines are made in Champagne, they're the first grapes picked any vintage. So they are very expressive and the key is you've got the acid there, that's not a problem, 
but it's really how much fruit components do you have to it? Because you're not going to really add anything else except for a little bit of sugar and um, a little bit of yeast to actually start that second fermentation inside the bottle. So you have so much stuff going on in there. The complexity of these wines, when they're well-made, world-class wines, they can age. And, and I, for instance, have them right up behind me right here to prove that. So um, I think that was a great question. And the answer is yes, if they're of high quality, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. And it ages a little bit differently, just to kind of add to that a little bit. Uh, you do want to age it on the cork, but that is a little bit different aging than what we try mm -hmm. to do in the cellar before we get it to you. Uh, so really the yeast autolysis really stops once we do that disgorging and the bottle goes yeah. to you. But it still goes through a really beautiful aging because there's some oxidation that happens through the cork. Right. So really it's, it just mm -hmm. kind of uh, really uh, makes it a little bit richer uh, some people appreciate that. Uh, does uh, uh, We are very used to very young fresh wines, uh, but really if you can get a nicely aged wine, it, it's just, it's heaven. So mm -hmm. thank you. All right, I think um, now we are, uh, it's time for trivia number three uh, with Rebecca. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. And thank you, Penny, for sharing those recipes with us. And I know we're going to make those available to everybody after the show. So we'll all get to try them. So um, without further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce our third <laughs> trivia question. And remember to type your answer in the chat box uh, for a chance to win one of our prizes. So, okay, the trivia question is, what is the meaning of demisec? Okay, and then I'm going to turn it back to Sharon in the tasting room. Well, this has been so fun. Cheers and thank yeah, you. Cheers. <laughs> All the wonderful comments coming through, the breathless moments. Um, you know, they're big, they're small, but they're also meaningful. And it's just been really fun. I wish we could all talk back and forth and had enough time to do that, miss that, that part of it. Um, but Mother's Day's coming. We're gonna be sending you a special um, for Mother's Day to our special club members. And we're actually going to um, invite you to uh, share that with your friends so that your friends can also get your, uh, your club discount, which we, think would be a nice way of sharing. Yeah. <laughs> um, we also just wanted to let you know that we are going to do this again, <laughs> even though we're scared to death. <laughs> May 9th, we're thinking of May 9th, Saturday at 5 p.m. That's the day before Mother's Day. Uh, we want to reserve Mother's Day for everybody to spend that time and honor those women in their life that they uh, are so dear and special to them. But we also get to wish you a happy Mother's Day um, the day before, so that'll be fun. We have a little um, tidbit on who might be coming. Um, one of the things that we do at Breathless is we have a Bubbles and Books, and it is connected with the Pulpwood Queens, which is the number one and largest uh, book club in the world. So we pair our brood with a different book every month and again every week so um, if you ever go to that site and check that out it's really a lot of fun. One of the founding members is Rebecca Rosenberg who's a local um, novelist, uh, has written some amazing uh, history of Jack London locally in her books and is doing research and actually has one book out there um, right now on the Champagne women. So um, just really exciting to, to bring that. You can hear a little bit of what she's up to, as well as um, the bubbles and books and that whole world um, that's out there and, and doing these book clubs. So it's pretty, pretty great. Um, also, Penny's going to come back with some more pairings. Penny, that was so amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, really, really enjoyed that. <laughs> And Nate Lopez, who is a familiar musician, an eight string guitarist is gonna be here to do a little bit of music with us as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we're 
we're excited and looking forward to it. Um, I want to thank you, Chris, so much for being here today with us. You gave so much, and uh, it was it was really fun to reconnect with you. And Absolutely, and uh, I got to say one thing too. The other reason I love this label so much, or this brand, is the label is so beautiful. It's like the best thing to look at ever. So, um, I mean, I can't have enough moments with you guys. Thank you. There's a funny story about that. The distributors wanted us to you know, pay, get rid of our label when we first came out. And they said, oh no, it'll never make it. You can't do it. You need to put your chateau on the front. And we're like, well, we don't really have a chateau. <laughs> so what are we gonna do? Yeah. Um, so we, uh, we, when we found, when Cynthia found that actually, and when she did, and we've been two years looking for the right thing to put on that label. Breathless moments, you know, we kind of put it together with our hiking with our mom up these mountains and backpacking and um, just those breathtaking views, but it just didn't translate onto the label. So when we saw her, she was just going for a breathless life and it's like, I want to go wherever she's going. So awesome. <laughs> thank you. And we have here. actually won uh, awards for the label. So um, yeah, good job, Cynthia. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad we kept it. Yeah, yeah. we fought. We had to fight. <laughs> All right, Cynthia. Um, so I just got a, a, a quick request to please repeat the women. Uh, so I'm going to do that really fast here. Uh, it's Louise Pomery, uh, Madame Clicquot, of course, mm -hmm. uh, Lily Bollinger, uh, Mathilde, I'm not sure if I'm saying these names right, Laurent Pierre, and Appleine Henriot. And I don't know if you. Henriot. Henriot. Henriot with no T. Thank you. So those were the five that we had um, on our list. Um, and now we've come to the very special moment um, where we are ready to uh, award our grand prize, which, of course, is this gorgeous bracelet that we showed you earlier. Um, so we have um, a winner of Susan D. Uh, talking about her very touching, breathless moments uh, with her growing family. Um, really, really amazing um, story from her and amazing from everybody. I mean, these moments going by are just like my heart is just full and it's been uh, just so much, so much fun. And so, you know, wonderfully, happily, emotionally great to see everybody's breathless moments. So just we hope that you'll continue to keep those coming to us even when we're not doing these tastings uh, because that's, that's really what we're all about. So thank you everyone for, for sharing with us. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, and back to Sharon now for our final toast. We have one more toast. So fill your glass and uh, <laughs> mine's getting very empty. <laughs> 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 but here's to our past our present and future breathless moments. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. <laughs>